Elden Ring makes me pissed, okay? It makes me so goddamn mad while playing it. But there's one thing that helps bring serotonin into my brain that makes me a little happier, if you will. And that's its OST. Elden Ring's music is goaded. It's goady woadied okay? And I freaking loved it. So I took one of my favorite songs and did a little music analysis. Now, I'm going to be real. I actually uploaded this video the day Elden Ring came out and it flopped. It did terrible. But do you know what? I'm really passionate about music. I've been a violinist for 18 going into 19 years now. And my God, am I going to shove this video down your goddamn throat, okay? Watch it. Just give me a chance here. Give this video a shot because music is everything to me. And don't make it so that me going to music school for that many years of my life, yes, I'm old, for me going to music school for that many years of my life mean nothing. Please, just give it a shot. Experience this song with me, even if you don't play Elden Ring. And in the comments below, let me know what song you want me to analyze next. I can do it for Genji, I can do it for Honkai, I can do it for any game. Just name a song that you want me to check out, and I will do it, okay? Give me a chance here, people. I love this game, and I love this song. Please. Thank you. This is me begging, okay? I'm just gonna- I'm gonna be 100% here. I'm gonna just beg you flat out. Give it a chance. Because I need this, okay? I need- I need this, damn it. Alright, that's enough groveling. I hope you enjoy the video, and uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you've already been watching my channel for a while, hit the like button, leave a comment, you know what to do. Enjoy! Alright, so here we are with Legend of the Ring. I was listening to Elden Ring music while I was playing the game, and there was this one track that, that when I hit this A note, it resonated in my soul. And I was like, okay, I've heard a lot of epic music, I've heard the fight music. Something about this song in particular is something that you just need to experience. For those of you guys who don't play Elden Ring who also subscribe to me, hear me out. This is worth paying attention to, just the song in particular, even if you're not going to play the game. So we have just a simple piano and a very beautiful vocal. In the alto range, not really the soprano range yet, but like, it's creating this, this, this airy sound. And now we're hitting to the higher register. And here we are with the first, the first glimpse of a cello. progression of the piece trying to make the sense of overwhelming <laughs> the part that part is just oh okay the chills i get the chills i get okay so first off we have is simplicity the the lack of use of instrumentation intentionally trying to go for a build-up but then we have the swelling of the symbol it sounds like it's like it's this build-up it's this sense of like this crescendo with everything coming at once and then the saddest most lamenting violin you've ever heard enough to break your heart comes in and it brings it together so well to to, to, to paint its own tale right have something that exists in this beautiful isolated state and then it moves into the sense of overwhelming and heartache after like it's painting a picture in your brain, regardless if you play the game, you can feel the emotion behind the writing. Here it comes again, so get ready. As we tumble down, we're building our first senses, and, and it kisses its way in. Oh, and the use of a glissando. So here, there's a few things that the technicality of it is what creates it to sound as sad as it is. The way the violin styling is, is that we have this sort of feeling of 16th century violin play. And the reason why I would call it that sort of era in particular is that it mimics the sound of almost a harpsichord while being a violin and creating the lamentation, creating the sadness by using glissando. 
those of you who don't know what glissando is, is when you take your hand and you basically slide into your next note. It goes from one note into the next. It's actually done when you drag your fingers down and slide them on your left hand. That's creating the no, and it it could also be done. It's also often used actually in Chinese music as well with an arhu, which is constantly using glissandos, where it creates these sad, almost speaking like moments. That's one of the really cool parts about a piece like this is that the music of the 16th century was more of a um, staccato and intentionally accented notes. This is going into more of like the sadder tone that is done more in modern era, which I just love the fact that it's so innovative, keeping almost similar to the timeline and the art style of what's going on in game, though the game sort of mimics a 1300s art style for clothing and such, even true more to like an older style regardless, while having innovations of the future, so I thought that was really cool. And like the choice here, right, where it's like, no. One of the really cool parts about this part in particular is that we get to hear the note take its stride in a way that we our brains anticipate. It's something that I really enjoy about game music in particular. For video game music, they try not to create jarring, alarming sounds. They create things that feel like natural progression. So for example, without even hearing this melody even once, you'd be able to predict where this note goes next. Let me show you. Close your eyes and once you predict, will the note go higher, lower, or stay the same? Will the next note go higher or lower or stay the same? Ready? We're going to play the first two notes before that again. Is the next note going to go higher or lower? And your brain already knows it's going to go higher in pitch. The next note will go higher because it feels right for it to do so. That way, it's not pulling you out of the game. It's not jarring to you. It's not something that makes you stop and go, oh, what was that? Oh, wait, what's going on? Your brain feels so immersed and it keeps the same ambiance. So ready, we're gonna play that part again and we're gonna let it play out fully. Ah, and then, it, right? And it builds up so good. It builds up so well. Like, da, da. Incredible, incredible soundtrack. I, I live for sad pieces. They're some of my favorites. Oh, and now we have our beautiful background vocals giving us the feeling of Gregorian chants almost. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, okay. Well, let's first talk about what we just, okay. That's all. Oh, that's a whole thing we got to talk about. But anyways, so for those of you guys who don't know what Gregorian chants are, Gregorian chants are actually how a lot of musical instruments were even created in the first place. The origins of almost what we would perceive to be music today is based in Gregorian chants of these brutally dreary hymns of just like what you heard from those like those tenors from those bassy boys who we were just oh like you hear stuff like that all the time and even in tracks like halo for example you can hear like gregorian chant inspired parts and um the fact that they kind of had that sort of like flirt into this part is brilliant it's brilliant and i just love that they make this they made this piece feel so intentionally like dated i don't mean dated as in like oh it's dated it's old i mean like dated like in the sense it actually feels like an older piece while having modern elements like that is such a rare thing to see in in, in sound design in in a, in a game music in general like to honor a time period and have multiple time periods being represented in your piece is just and for it to work is so brilliant like i can't it's revolutionary honestly like it's something that you just don't see often you see a lot of people especially when writing game music, to be inspired by a time period, to be inspired by a specific sort of, a specific sort of notion almost. But this doesn't 
it doesn't get bound down to like oh just 16th century it's it's roaming around into different centuries while making it still sound like it belongs to it gets meant to be together and that's what makes it so interesting versus it being like oh it's this 100 year time period or this 200 year time period or in a certain specific era and games like ancient impact where i re reviewed that music we saw a lot of the times that they were inspired by certain eras and historical periods within their pieces and they didn't really mesh other eras with other era specific instruments unless it's already been done in modern day as well and that's where this takes a turn is that it's choosing to take that risk and it is so successful in doing so oh yeah and then we had the 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 the, oh, the resonating sound of everyone lifting their instruments letting the note hang in the air with its natural acoustics and just it holds and it has this place where it doesn't cut off into immediate silence it, it lets the note breathe after just just feel the room go into silence You hear the vocals? Mm -hmm. The thing about this is that notice how every time we have a vocal styling, it's never the focus. It is always a background piece. The violin taking its stride yet again, taking control. but with the saddest hand as if it's lost and it's lamenting for something more it, you feel the way that it it tries to evoke something out of you of just this fragility of this where it feels frail and you want to hold this violin and everything around it is swelling it's overwhelming it's, it's almost overpowering right? how come the, the one that should be the focus is crying out to us Lost in the sea of all this other sound. Listen to the harmonics. These high-pitched sounds, these harmonics being used consistently rather than sparingly. The tension. Oh, the rumbling. Wow. I've never gone to this part of the song before. I've never gone... Whoa! I've never... I, I, I just started... Like, I, I never got this far yet. I... Uh, my brain. I never got to this movement before. Hold on. The sound design. That rumbling like a storm. That sound design is so unique. Not just a storm, but like the rolling of like a wooden wheel on stone. That's so interesting. That is... What beautiful... I love... I, video game music is like one of the smartest things ever. Like, you couldn't... Like, you can try to mimic this, like, live with like... Basically using like Foley stuff in your percussion section. But like, to even have this thought to add it in is just... Oh. Video games are so smart, man. Like, I don't understand. Like, this is... Ah! Okay. This is, this is like, my, my biggest rant. is when people ever go, Oh, it's a video game sound. Oh, I listen to video game soundtracks. I'm like, oh, cringe. Like, shut the fuck up. Video game soundtracks are so good. Look at this effort. Look at this attention to detail. As someone who's been playing for as many years as, I, as a lot of you've been alive. Okay? This is mind-blowing stuff. This is so... Like, oh my god, we need to look at this composer. I, I'm, I'm gonna freak out. 
And now, finally, the unison! The unison! The vocals have been isolated this whole time, taking a backseat. The violin has been lamenting, crying out for a partner alone on the journey. And now, together, they take their stride, and you feel it! Yo? The high fantasy of the journey. So the thing about how they're playing this part, I know people usually like it when I stick to the more musical side of things, but the technicality of this part is pretty interesting too. So what you'll be hearing in particular, you can listen for it now, is dugga 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 right? And with that you'll have the first note of each part accenting. So da 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 and it like the reason it does that is because if you go da 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 you lose the effect of the buildup. The buildup it needs to be accented. And the reason being is that when you have a part that's like the the second movement, where it was the sad, lulling, heartbreaking part, you wouldn't want to use those accented notes. You try to refrain from those as much as possible and use things like diminuendos. But when we're going into a final movement like this one, with this with this gravitas, with this power, right? You need to have those accented notes, even if you're trying to add flourish and counteractive parts from the main styling, because it creates a larger um, it creates a larger power, right? The moment you start to take notes and make them less accented, you're choosing a stylistic choice of a different part. Like you need to have a motive when creating certain movements, and the motive here clearly is we take our final stride in unison. It feels like not a march, but like. Oh, by Chaucer, like Canterbury Tales, right? They they go on like this like this whole adventure, right? And it's in unison. It's just a bunch of dudes with a bunch of tails, <laughs> like a bunch of dudes. But it feels like that. It feels like there's like the journey, the souls we meet along the way, and the power that is inflicted upon encounters and having a similar goal. The the collaboration, the coming together of parts. And that is what you feel here. I, I don't know how to explain it, but this is what I get from it, is the feeling of different elements becoming one. And I don't know if that makes sense to the game or not yet, but that's exactly the energy that I understand from this part. So, we'll see what happens in game. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. Like, oh, oh, it's so epic. Personally, I have no idea how the song ends. Either make it swell or pull everything out and make it just isolated violin with piano. Oh my god, it's swelling. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh. Yo? I could not interrupt that. That was just that was too good for me to interrupt and talk about. I couldn't I couldn't talk while it was playing. I had to wait. I had to wait. Okay, that was when we come into this part, you know I talked about the control. Vocals are playing this backtrack. Vocals are are are, are part of it, but they're creating a sensation versus being the focal point. This is where they took the reins. You really did. And the switch that we got was so seamless and it felt it didn't feel overwhelming anymore. It felt powerful. And that is such 
it's such a beautiful sensation and I just I love this I, I can't believe that such an intricate piece is has been written and and it's only like the start of the year man like I I just I think this actually might hit one of my top video game songs of all time and that's saying a lot that's saying quite a lot but it's the technicality and understanding of eras that gives me so much respect for this piece because there's a lot of really epic pieces or sad pieces that I really enjoy, but this one in particular was able to cultivate so many different notions into one. What an incredible piece. I really hope you subscribe to the channel because I love talking about music and what I'm passionate about. It would mean the world to me. I play a lot of Genshin Impact and Honkai Impact, and as well as I'm playing Elden Ring now. Um, and I want to actually do a way more music reviews and way more music breakdown. So if you have any video game songs you want to recommend to me, let me know in the comments below because I would love to be able to share your passion for music with you or even just to break down songs that you might like but not understand fully why you like it besides that it just sounds cool. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you guys later. Oh, also if there's a bad song, I would be totally down to roast a song. So, you know, feel free to send me that too. All right, thanks so much for watching. Bye! <laughs>